In this first video of Studio One Basics, we'll be getting started with some setup and creating our first song. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now recently I made a video about my top five reasons to use Studio One as your main DAW. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out above my head right now. Now a few people asked me afterwards if I would make a series of videos to cover the basics of using Studio One. And this is the first of those videos. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the download, installation, and setup of Studio One, as well as moving on to recording our first song, including recording virtual instruments and audio as well. So there's a lot to cover today. Now I should say that this tutorial is based around using Studio One Professional. Some of it may be applicable to Artist and Prime as well, but it's mainly focused on the professional version of Studio One. Now before we do get started, if you do like this kind of content, content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into Studio One. So we're going to start off at the very beginning with download, installation and setup of Studio One. Now if you've already downloaded and installed Studio One, it still may be worth you watching this section because sometimes there's a couple of steps which people miss and I'm going to cover them here. Now of course I am assuming that you've already bought Studio One and you do have a product key before I start this section. So let's get stuck in. I'm going to open up my web browser which is uh, Chrome in my case and I'm going to go to my Personas. There's a link for that down in the description. It's my.personas.com. And if you haven't already got an account there, then you should register an account and you should already have a product key, I'm hoping, before you do that. Now, once you've registered and you log in, you'll end up at this home screen. And I want you to go across to my products. And that's going to show you a list of products which are already registered. Now, if you already have Studio One Professional listed there, that's great. If you don't, then you'll need to click on this big yellow button and register a product that will open this window, leave it on software or add-on and then enter your Studio One product key there and register it. And that's going to cause Studio One Professional to be listed there with your products. Then all you need to do is click on the little download icon there, which I'm going to do now. And I'm just going to let it go ahead and download Studio One. Now what it's downloading is the files that you actually totally need for, for using Studio One. But there are some additional things that you get with Studio One Professional, which are not in this download. And that's how they keep the download nice and small, because that's going to be ready in a few seconds. But those things are things like loops um, and some extra sounds for the virtual instruments that you do get with Studio One Professional. I'm going to show you how to install those from within Studio One itself, where it's much, much easier than trying to do it from a web page. So stick around for that little part, which will be coming up soon. And I'm just going to fast forward the video for a moment till we get to the part where it's down loaded. Okay, so now it's downloaded. I'm just going to click on that in the bottom of my browser to open up the executable file, which it's going to do for me right now. It's going to ask me some security questions, which I'll just click yes for to allow the installer to make changes to my computer. Then it's going to ask me to select a language, which I have here. It's English, so I'll click on OK. And then I just click on next on this screen, the welcome screen. Then I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions. I'll click agree there. I agree. And then I'm going to select a location. Now, I suggest that you keep this on the default location. This is where it's going to install the core Studio One files. Now, I do have some other locations for you to set up a little bit later on for your actual song and project files. And it's important, in my opinion, to have them in a different location. But for now, I would leave this on the default location, which in my case here is C Program Files, Prisonus Studio 1.4. So I'll click on Install there. It's going to do a few little things and go ahead and install it. I'll speed up the video and meet you on the other end. Okay, so now it's finished installation, so I'll just click on the finish button. Now I'm just going to keep my web browser open, but I'm going to minimize it because I'll need the product keys from that actual page. So I'll just minimize that for the moment. And you should now see a little shortcut on your desktop for Studio One 4. If you don't, then go down to the search section in Windows there. This is Windows 10 and start to type Studio just looking around my microphone, uh, Studio One, and you can see there 
that it's got the Studio One application there. So I'll just click on that and start it up for the first time. So I'm just going to click on I accept to accept the terms and conditions. And it's going to ask me here to log on to my Prisonis account. So I'm going to go ahead and type in um, my credentials there. I'll speed the video up. And I'll just go ahead and click on login. That's going to sign me into my Prisonis account. And then I'm going to activate this copy of Studio One. So I'll need to go back to my web browser there and just grab that from here. So I'm just going to click on there on Prisona Studio One there. It opens up the main page for this product and I can copy the product key from there. I'm clicking Control C on my keyboard. I'll go back to that startup screen, pop in the product key, paste it there and then click on Activate. And it thanks me, I click OK, and it goes ahead and opens Studio One for the first time. It's just going to do a few little checks before it actually gets going. So now it's going to ask you about those extra files that I was talking about, the extra things which come with Studio One Professional. But I'm going to choose not to install any of that at the moment. I'm just going to close this window so that I can set up some file locations for this to download to and to save my songs and projects, etc. So I'll close this window and I'm just going to go up to Studio One menu at the top and click on Options, or you could just click on Control, Comma to open up this options dialog and I'm going to go across to the locations tab here. Now I'm going to set up a location where I want my Studio One files to exist. This is not where the program is installed to but it's where things like songs, projects and also where downloadable content goes to and I highly recommend that you do install this on another drive other than your main C drive. So if you haven't got another drive on your computer or you don't have an external drive then you can go ahead and use this location but if you do have some kind of external drive or another drive within your computer itself with lots of space then I suggest changing this location to somewhere within that drive and that's what I'm going to do now on this machine I've got one extra drive it's my D drive so I'm just going to click on the browse file location here click on that I'm going to go to my computer and then go to this uh, D drive which I have here and then I've already created a folder there in fact called studio one files you could just go ahead and create that I'll click on that and then click on select folder and that sets up that file location there that means when I do download some content that it's going to go to that location. So I'm just going to click on OK. Now there's a couple of other little things that you could set up on here. You can connect up with SoundCloud or you can set up, you know, a picture and stuff for your artist profile. I'm not going to show you that here because I've already set that up on my main computer and I'm going to switch to my main computer now so that I can go ahead and show you some of the important hardware setup that you need to do. So up until now, I've been working on a spare machine just so I could show you the installation process there. But now we're on my main production PC where I normally have uh, my Studio One installed and in use. And I'm going to continue from there so that I can show you some important steps before we record our first song. So as you can see here, I've already set up some basic things like uh, the profile picture there and my connection to SoundCloud. They're not particularly important things. You can probably figure them out for yourself, but they're not that important for us going to go ahead and actually record a song. So I'm not going to show you those now. What is really important is that you set up an audio device. Obviously, you're going to need to hear and make some sound in your songs. So let's go ahead down the bottom. Now you can see I already have my Studio 192 interface set up. Yours may show something different there or it may show that there's no interface installed at all. So what you need to do is to click on Configure Audio Device and I'll click that now. And then you need to go uh, where it says audio device. There's a drop down menu here in this interface and you can see all of the available audio devices on your system there. And you just go ahead and select the one that you want to use. Now, a little word of warning here, because there is one at the bottom here called Windows Audio. So if you're on a Mac, it may say something a little bit different. I'm not sure what it will say for Mac's internal audio, um, but this is to enable you to use um, the audio system, which is on your 
operating system. And that's something I highly recommend against. I get lots and lots of emails and messages every week from people who are trying to record music on a system where they don't have a dedicated audio interface. They're trying to use their internal audio system and it's always very, very problematic. It's okay if you don't have one right at this moment and you just want to check out Studio One, but don't be surprised if you don't get a few audio problems. Now I have reviewed a couple of smaller interfaces recently, really well priced. I'll put a link to those in the description down below. You can check those out. So go ahead and choose your audio interface. As I say, mine's the Studio 192, so I'm going to select that and then just click on OK. Now you could go ahead right away and start to create a song now, but there's another couple of things which I'm just going to ask you to take a look at before we do dive in. The first thing is to set up some sort of input device to actually play notes on for your virtual instruments. Normally this is going to be a piano style keyboard or a synthesizer but you can also actually use your computer keyboard just in case you don't have an external device for it. So um, to do this we're going to go to configure external devices. We'll click on that and you can see that I've already got one external device. That's my fader port. It's a Presonus product. I didn't have to set it up. It just installed that automatically for me so there's no setup for that. But I'm going to go ahead and set up my Yamaha keyboard first off. As I say, if you don't have an external keyboard, I will be showing you how to deal with that later. But let's start off with the scenario where you've got either a controller keyboard or some other keyboard like a synthesizer connected. I'll click on add. And in my case, I'm going to just go down to where it says Yamaha. There's a whole bunch of different company names you can see there. I'm going to go to Yamaha. And in fact, the only one they have, which is mine, is the KX range of keyboards. I'll just click on that. And the main thing I need to do here is to set up a receive from and send to MIDI channel. Now, mine is set up uh, with a USB to MIDI cable. So I'm just going to set that the same for both of these. So for a receive from, I'll just go USB MIDI cable and for send to um, USB MIDI cable. Now that's going to be different. If you've just got um, a controller keyboard which is just set up via USB and plugged in, it's going to show a different name there. Normally you're just going to set up both. Um, if you've got something connected by regular MIDI cables, then you need to make sure that you select your in and out cables uh, inputs appropriately. Now, if you don't happen to have one which is on the list there, I'll just click on OK just to add that, make sure I've got it. So if you don't happen to have one which is on the list, just go to Add um, and then just go to New Keyboard right up the top. Give it a name. I'll just leave it as New Keyboard for now. It doesn't matter. Um, and then again, select your Receive From and Send to MIDI Channels there. Now, a lot of the time what's going to happen there, if it's just a general uh, MIDI keyboard, you're going to get most of the functionality like the actual notes being played, etc but you might not get complete control of the keyboard um, that you would get with a dedicated sort of driver like the KX one I just showed you. But I'm going to cancel that for a moment because the other thing that you may want to do if you don't have a keyboard is to actually um, use your computer keyboard for input. And to do that, you would click on Add. Again, um, you would go down to Presonus down the bottom there. Scroll down to where it says QWERTY keyboard. Click on that. There's no other setup. You just have to click on OK. And now your computer keyboard will be ready to use within Studio One to record basic parts. It is really basic, of course, and it doesn't have velocity and all that kind of good stuff, but it will get you by until you do get a dedicated keyboard. So now that we've got all that set up and we'll click on OK, there's just one more thing we need to do if you want to follow along with the rest of my tutorial in terms of adding instruments to the song later. And that's to download some of those extra files that I told you about. So we're going to go up to the top, Studio One, and then we're going to go down to where it says Studio One Installation. I'll click on that. And this is an area where you're going to be able to um, uh, download the extra things that you do get with Studio One Professional. You'll see that it's already set up to install to the folder that we created earlier on. And so then I just need to go to show packages here. I'll click on that. Now for this tutorial, there's only a couple of things you're going to need. If we go to instruments here, we'll open up that folder, go to uh, Presence XD Core Library, open up that folder and just install the Presence XD Core Bases. We're just going to use that a little later on. You can see I've got it installed there. But if you want, you could just go ahead and install all of those Presence XD um, instruments there. Now the other one that I'm going to be using is 
is again under instruments, but um, it's under the impact drum kits. Just open that, it's the only choice there, impact XT kits and sounds, and go ahead and click that to install it. So um, you go ahead and do that. I've already installed it, so I don't need to do it now, but that's where you will do that. And we're ready to open up our first song. So from the start page in Studio One, we can either create a song or a project. Now a project is a place where you can work on individual songs or a group of songs and prepare them for release. Typically there we'll be doing mastering, setting up metadata and finally exporting our files for release. We're not going to be covering that in today's video, but I will be making another video about that. So look out for that. In today's video, we're going to focus on creating our first song. And we do that by clicking on create a song at the top left there and that opens up this dialog box. Now on the left hand side of this dialog box, we have three tabs, styles, interfaces, and users. These are collections of templates and templates are really handy to quickly get you started with creating a song because they add certain elements that you'll need for a particular style or a particular setup. But we're actually gonna select an empty song to start off with because we wanna add those elements ourselves so that we can learn about them. On the right hand side, we're gonna give our song a name. So I'll just call mine Test. And then further down, I wanna set up a sample rate. Now I'm not gonna go into lots of detail about sample rates today. There's lots of pros and cons for different sample rates, but I'm just gonna suggest a couple to you here. Now I've got mine set to 48 kilohertz, and that's because I create a lot of video, obviously, and 48 kilohertz is a kind of a standard for video. If you're just recording audio, then you might wanna start off with 44.1 kilohertz kilohertz. That's absolutely fine for today's music production. Further on from that, um, for resolution, I would just go with 24-bit. There are some different choices there, but that's too much for us to go into today. 24-bit is just fine for the moment. So go ahead and click on OK, and that's going to open up this empty song. Now there's lots and lots of things to look at here. And rather than go through each individual aspect of this user interface, I'm gonna let you learn gradually by using different parts of this user interface. But before we really get started, I like to start off by actually saving my song. Now why do I do that? Well, when you create a song like this, and eventually when you do save it, Studio One creates lots of folders and files which relate to that song, but it doesn't do that until you save it for the first time. So I like to make sure that's done. And I'll go up to file here and then go down to save as I'll go with the default name, which is test song, and then I'll click on save. So that's created a folder for our song. It's created some subfolders for different elements of the song and the main file itself. So we've got our nice blank canvas here. So let's start off by adding our first virtual instrument. So to add our first instrument, I'm gonna be using the browse panel and that's on the right hand side here. If you can't see that, then you can toggle it off and on by hitting that browse button on the bottom right hand side. Now it's on its home tab at the moment where it actually just gives a list to the other tabs that you can see going across the top. So I'm gonna start off by clicking on instruments here and then I have a selection of virtual instruments installed on my system. You probably have a lot less than me here. I have a whole bunch, but we're only gonna be using the Presonus ones today and you should have that showing there. So I'm just gonna double click on the Presonus folder and that gives me a list of the Studio One instruments there. Now I'm gonna be using Impact and I could just simply drag that across to the left now to add that there. But instead, I just wanna use one of its presets and an easy way to start off with that is by double clicking on Impact here and then that that will show a list of the presets installed. And if you followed my instructions earlier, you should see roughly the same ones there. So I'm gonna be starting off by using the UK Garage preset, which is right at the bottom there. And I'll just drag it across to the left-hand side and drop it there. And there our instrument opens up there and we've created our first instrument track. And if I click on the pads here, I can hear it. Now, if I do uh, actually click on the speaker icon right up here, that will enable me to hear the instrument when I play it on my keyboard. Now, I have an external Yamaha keyboard connected here and it's already set up, so I'll just play that. Okay, that's fine. Now, as I say, if you don't have a keyboard, you can use your computer keyboard for this at the moment. In order to do that, what you'll need to do is just click on the I icon here and then just go down to 
in for or the in for inputs there and just make sure that you have QWERTY keyboard selected. It will probably work if you leave it on all inputs, but to be specific, let's choose QWERTY keyboard. Now, in order to use this, what we're going to need to do is open up the mix area, so the mix panel. So I'll do that by clicking on mix in the bottom right, and that is our console. Now, in order to use this, we're going to need to make sure that we have external devices showing. So we'll just click on external down here to show them. And then you'll see the QWERTY keyboard just there. So I'll just double click on QWERTY keyboard. And there we are showing the keyboard there. If I click on the keys, you can hear the different sounds. Now, when you first this, use this, it might be on a different octave, for example, up here. And you'll hear these kinds of sounds but we're using Octave C1. So I'll just close my console, I won't be needing that for the moment. And now that I've got that open, I can actually use the keys on my computer keyboard to play the instrument. Let's do that now. Okay, that's working fine. So if you haven't got an external keyboard, then go ahead and use that. But I will be using my Yamaha keyboard, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, select all inputs so that I can use either of those things. And I'll just click on I at the top there to close that panel. We won't need needing that. So I'll just double check I can hear it. And that's great. Now I can go ahead and record it. So the first thing I'll need to do is arm it for recording. So I'll click on record the record arming button up there. That makes sure that when we do finally hit record, it will actually record that instrument. Now the last thing I need to do before I do all of, before I actually start recording is to set up my metronome to play along with. Um, so at the bottom here, just next to the transport controls and above where it says metronome, you'll see this little icon here, I'll click on that to make sure that turns blue. And that means now the metronome is on. And also the other thing that's on is the rain outside. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's pretty hard. So <laughs> moving on, the other thing I want to do is set up the tempo for my metronome. So that is a little bit to the right of the metronome there. You can see the tempo there is currently set to 71. And if I click on that, I can actually type in a new value there such as 100. And if you happen to know the tempo you want, that's fine. If you don't know the tempo and you just want to go by feel, then what you can do is with your mouse, you can actually just click on the word tempo there. Now I'll do that for a couple of bars and see what I get. Okay, so it's come up for 83. That's fine. I'll go along with that. And I'll just quickly listen to that. Yeah, that sounds fine. Now, if you find that your, tem that your metronome isn't loud enough for you, then just open up the mix uh, view there. I'll just click on that. And over there on the master fader, right above the fader, you can see this little icon here, which is for the volume of the metronome. So I'll just uh, click and hold that and I'll just push that up. I'm going to push that all the way up to the top there. So it's nice and loud for me. And that will give me a nice loud metronome. I'll close the mix view there. And now I'll just have a listen to that again. That seems fine. So I'm going to go ahead and record my drums. And I do that either by clicking on record in the transport controls down here or hitting asterisks on the keyboard, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, that seems fine. That's my first recording. I'll just move impact out of the way there. And let's uh, just set our playhead to where I started to record there or just before that. And I'll do that by clicking on the ruler at the top. And then I'll hit space on my keyboard to play. Okay, that's fine, but it's a little bit out of time. So what I'm gonna do is quantize that. And I'll do that by clicking Q on the keyboard. And you'll see the notes shuffle around there. And what that does is it moves the notes it moves the notes to a near grid marker and you set up the resolution of that with the quantize controls up the top here. You can see quantize. It's on 1 16th at the moment, which is fine for me. You may need to set that to a different value there to get a better quantization. I'm not going to go into quantizing in detail right here. It's a reasonably large subject, which I'll cover in a different video. So now that I have quantized that and put it more in time, I want to actually record a hi-hat over the top of that kick and snare. So I'm just going to record, I'm just going to uh, set my playhead back to the beginning by clicking on that and the transport controls down here. And I'm going to record this hi-hat over the top 
with a little sort of open hi-hat there as well. Now, in order to make sure that I don't record over my kick and snare that I've recorded so far, I'll just make sure I've got the correct setting. So down at the bottom, near the transport controls, just off to the right, there's a little cog there, and that opens up the record panel. And it is actually set correctly here for me with just this one selection on, which is record mix. So that's gonna record a mix mix the two things together the parts I've already recorded and the new recording so I'll close that panel and then I'm going to hit asterisk on my keyboard again to make sure that I start recording Okay, and I hit space on the keyboard to stop that. So that's really, really quite out of time. So again, I'll make sure that it's selected like so. Hit Q on the keyboard to quantize it. And let's have a listen. I'll start the playhead right at the beginning there. Uh, right, oh, sorry, at the beginning of the second bar. And I'll hit space on my keyboard. Okay, that's awesome. That's our first instrument in there. So let's go ahead and record our second virtual instrument. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a bass guitar. So I'm just gonna navigate back from this instrument, this impact instrument here, back to the Presonus folder, and I'm actually going to add a presence instrument. So I'll double click on presence there, and then I've got a couple in there, bass and vintage keys. I'm gonna go for the bass folder, so I'll double click on that to open that, and I'm gonna use the six string bass, so I'll double click on that folder, and then there's a few different six string bass choices in there. I'm just gonna drag in the six string bass full, and I'll just drag that all the way over there to the left hand side and that's added that instrument in there so i'll record enable that instrument and i'll turn it so that automatically turns its little speaker icon so i can hear it i'm just going to switch off the record and speaker for the garage uh, the uk garage drums i recorded there so let's just have a listen to that sounds absolutely fine so i'll record uh, i'll set the playhead back to the beginning again it'll give me a little bit of time there and i'm just going to record and play along with those drums so i'll hit asterisk on the keyboard to do that Okay, and that's fine. I have my little section there recorded. Again, I'm just gonna click on that. I'll make sure it's selected and I'm just gonna hit Q on the keyboard to quantize it and that puts it all nicely in time. So let's have a listen to that. I'll just put the playhead at the beginning of that section there. Click, click on the, a space on my keyboard. Okay, and I've got something started there. Now I'm just gonna trim the ends of these sections here. So um, I'm just gonna grab the edge of the base there and I'm just gonna drag it across so that it's starting right there at the beginning of where the first note is. And the same for the drums there, I'm just gonna drag that across. Now they're uh, sort of clicking or snapping to the beginning of the bar. If that's not happening for you, then you need to click on this toggle switch at the top here, which turns snapping on and off. If it's off, then you can freely drag those edges to anywhere you please. If it's on, then in this case, it's gonna snap to the beginning of the bars. So I have my first virtual instruments recorded. So the next thing I'd like to do is record some actual audio. Now audio could be an instrument like a guitar or a bass, or it could be something like vocals where you're actually using a microphone. We're gonna keep it simple today and just record an electric guitar plugged into our audio interface. So we're gonna start off by looking at the left-hand side of the main tracks panel. I'm gonna right click there and then click on add audio track mono. So mono is for when it's just one single source like this one guitar plugged in, but you could record in stereo, for example, with two microphones or perhaps with two cables coming from a synthesizer plugging in in stereo. But as I say, we're gonna go for a mono track. So I'll click on that there and I'll just start off by giving it a name, which I'll call guitar. The reason I name it right now is because um, if you name it right away, when you start to record, the clips will be named appropriately over here. Um, so that's just a little thing that makes it handy. Now, the next thing I need to do is select an input on my audio interface. You can see at the moment here, it says none. And if I open this, there's none selected. And that's because I haven't set up the uh, the inputs on my audio interface. I did have them set up, but I got rid of the settings just so I could show you guys. So what I'm gonna do is click on audio 
input output setup there and I'll click on that it brings up this interface here now this is going to look a little different depending on your interface and its capabilities mine happens to have a whole bunch of inputs there 26 inputs in all yours may only have one or two if you're using a very simple interface may only have one often I'm recommending that people at least get an interface with two inputs like the ones I've recommended in the description down below now what I like to do here if I've got two inputs is set it up in the following way I'll start off by adding a mono input this is for, for when I'm just using one input so I'll just click add mono there and it's called input one I'll just leave it named like that you can click on there and rename it so that set that up and it's automatically selected that mono uh, input there on my first channel of my audio interface which is fine now um I want to set up another one in case I want to use the second channel on my interface. So I'll just click add mono again. It's automatically named it input two. And again, it's automatically uh, set it to the second input, but I could choose another input, of course. But in your case, you've probably got, only got one or two inputs, so you'll select one and two for inputs one and two. And then just in case you want to record a stereo signal, so you want to record both at the same time onto the same track, then I would add a stereo. So add stereo at the bottom there. Now at the moment, for me, it's automatically selected inputs three and four, but if you've only got two inputs, you'll wanna change that to uh, the first ones, so input one and two. And then I would normally uh, rename that to, uh, let's say, um, input, left right okay that's fine whatever you want to name it to is fine then you just click on apply at the bottom there and then click on OK to close that. And now over where I've created my guitar track, I'll have some selections available. So I am going to select uh, one and two. You notice it hasn't got the third one there, the, the stereo um, input, and that's because um, I've set this up as a mono track, so it doesn't show that one to me. So I'm gonna choose input one. That's where I've got my electric guitar plugged in. And of course, I'm just gonna hit the record enabled so that I'm ready to record it. I'll just go ahead and plug my guitar in and then I'll join you at the other end. So I've got my guitar plugged in and I've set up the level on my audio interface. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about correct levels in this video, but I'll just tell you that I've aimed for a peak of around about minus 12 dB for this electric guitar. Now I'm gonna play a few notes on this guitar and I want you to see if you can hear anything strange about it. And again. Can you hear there's a kind of an echo or delay sound on there? That's not intentional. I haven't put any effect on there at all. What's happening is we can actually hear two signals. The first is coming straight from my audio interface. There's a feature on there called direct monitoring so that I can hear immediately what's coming from whatever source it is, whether it's a guitar or a microphone. The other sound we're hearing is from Studio One itself, and that's the sound of the guitar after it's been processed in Studio One. And there's a slight delay, and that delay is called latency, and that's why we're hearing that little echo. Now, depending on your audio interface and your setup, that could be longer or shorter. If it's too long, it can really be quite distracting when you're playing. So in this case, what I'm actually going to do in Studio One itself is turn that speaker icon off. Now, I'll switch off, and I'll play again. <laughs> and you can hear just the straight guitar sound there. So that's what I'm gonna to listen to while I'm recording. However, if I decided to put effects on this guitar in Studio One and I wanted to hear those effects while I'm playing, I would have to switch this little speaker icon on so that I could hear those effects in real time. And if I don't wanna hear that latency at all, then I may mute my direct monitoring on my interface. But I'll keep it simple for today and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in another video. So I'll switch that speaker icon off again and I'm all ready to record. I've selected my input, which is input one. My guitar's in tune, I hope, I think. And I'll go ahead and I'll hit asterisk on the keyboard and record this guitar. And that's all she wrote. So I've got my first audio recording there. I'll just move the playhead to just before that point there by clicking on the ruler at the top. And I'll click uh, play on my keyboard or kick, click space on my keyboard.
Okay, so we have the basis of our first recording. We've got two virtual instruments and some audio there, and that's just about all of the types of things that you're actually going to record. I just want to listen to it on a loop for a little while to see how it sounds. So I'm just going to click on one of these tracks up here. I'll click on the UK Garage one first, and you can see at the top, it's automatically sort of selected that range with those sort of markers and range marker at the top there. And just down at the bottom where the transport controls are, I am actually going to click on the loop button and then I'm going to play. Let's have a listen. So hopefully I've given you enough there to get started with recording your first song in Studio One. Now in future videos, I'm gonna be delving into all of this in a little bit more detail, especially on recording virtual instruments, using MIDI instruments, all that kind of stuff, and delving a lot further into recording audio and editing audio, as well as mixing as well. So if you wanna see those videos, do make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now if you did like this video, do make sure you hit the like button as well. That really helps me out because it lets YouTube know that other people should see this video. If you didn't like this video, make sure you hit the dislike button twice. Now we've covered a lot today and I'm really impressed that you've hung around for this long. So if you've made it to this part of the video, let me know in the comments down below. Say, hey Mike, I made it to the end and I'll give you a thumbs up. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.